Both the pollsters and computers agree. Florida and Oklahoma are the two best teams in the nation. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horwitz with you here on CBSSports.com. Welcome to the BCS Countdown Show presented by the new PSP 3000 system. Each week leading up to the BCS National Championship game on January 8th, we'll bring in the latest BCS news and get you ready for each of the five games beginning with the Rose Bowl on January 1st. But let's start with the BCS as a whole and to do that, let's bring in my college football partner all season long, CBS Sports' Spencer Tillman. And Spence, uh, Oklahoma, Florida, one and two, both the BCS and AP polls. Uh, Texas was left out there at three. And as always, there are gripes about the BCS. It's no different this year. Do you think the system worked this season? Do you think the system worked? Well, let's just look at it from a historical standpoint. I guess since 98, when we first started this BCS system, it's worked from then to now. About 90% of the time, like it was supposed to play out. You know, Roy Kramer, the founder of this whole deal, said it was, was designed to determine the best one and two teams in the country. And, and in some regards, it's a lot like politics and making sausage. You know, you, you're you okay with the outcome, but you really don't want to see it made. You know what I mean? But look, I'm okay with it. I obviously, you got to put an asterisk by my comments. I'm an Oklahoma Sooner, so it is what it is. But I tell you, the problem with the coaches is they don't understand the system. And, you know, being a historian, I know you love music. I thought we'd go to some lyrics with Stevie Wonder. You remember that song he wrote? Of course, it was before you were born. Uh, superstition, I think it was. There was a line in it that went something like this one. When you believe in things <laughs> that you don't understand and you suffer, superstition ain't the way. See, it's the BCS, man. It's all about superstition, but in order to get by it, you got to believe it and understand it, Jason. Well, Florida and Oklahoma believe, uh, whether or not they want to listen to Stevie Wonder, that's accurate. They believe they're in. <laughs> Texas is not. We'll get to the Longhorns in a sec, but let's break down the national championship game, Spence. When you look at Florida and Oklahoma at first glance, first meeting ever between the two schools, uh, do you see an area where one team can take advantage of the other? Well, I thought it was interesting that watching firsthand the SEC championship game in Atlanta, I noticed that Nick Saban through three quarters pretty much allowed Tim Tebow to attempt to beat him with his arm. And Tim did not have great success through three quarters. In the fourth quarter, a couple of key breakdowns offensively and defensively for Alabama opened up the door. But I think there was some point along the way when Urban Meyer, his head coach, and Dan Mullen, his offensive coordinator, said, you're going to have to beat them with your arm. They're allowing you the time necessary to sit back and try to dissect us. Uh, Alabama didn't do anything particularly funky. They basically dropped an in and zone coverage to kind of confuse them a little bit, but there were no zone blitz schemes or combinations that I saw. They were just hoping that Tim Tebow would make a mistake. Fortunately for him, he had the speed perimeter guys, although no Harvin wasn't involved in the mix. They were able to make up for that with that interior speed and stretch the edges and give him the time necessary to make plays. But again, I think if there's a point that you can exploit this team, it's allowing Tim Tebow to play out long enough where he'll make a mistake uh, and not try to force him with pressure. And we'll see if Oklahoma's defense can do that. Now, Spence, we had a great quarterback matchup in the BCS national title game when it was Matt Leinart against Vince Young. Do you think we may have an even better one? Maybe not outcome for a game because that was phenomenal, but in terms of quarterback matchup, when you look at Sam Bradford and Tim Tebow. Boy, I tell you, there's a lot of heroics here. One guy going for back-to-back -back Heisman trophies, perhaps, and then uh, the Bradford story just had surgery on that non-throwing hand. The, the ligaments that are there, they're repaired. There's a heroic kind of quality to that whole thing. The prolific numbers Oklahoma's put up, 61 points, uh, 62 points in this last outing, and then for five straight games to be able to clip 60 points is quite remarkable. In fact, no one's ever done it in the history of the college game. So all of that stuff makes for an interesting backdrop to this, uh, this particular national championship. And again, uh, Florida having already won one. Uh, you remember, Bob Stoops also also passed up the Florida job many moons ago, almost 10 seasons ago. So there's a lot that's here, and I'll tell you, this is going to be one for the ages, but I will put this little caveat, Jason. I would have loved to see teams with contrasting styles. I think we kind of saw a mini national championship with Florida and Alabama. One great offense against a juggernaut defense. We'll see two prolific offenses in this one. Yeah, absolutely. That will be the case in the national title game, but we have to get there first. There are four other BCS games that we have to see beforehand. Let's take a look at the other ones, and uh, you know, you have the Sugar Bowl with Alabama, Utah. It's all starts with the Rose Bowl between Penn State. Maybe it's Joe Paterno's last game, though he says it's not. They're taking on USC and Pete Carroll, Virginia Tech and Cincinnati in the Orange Bowl, and then Texas, the team that was left out against Ohio State in the Fiesta Bowl. Spence, which one of those four intrigues you the most? 
Well, you know, the USC Penn State matchup is interesting because uh, of a number of factors. First of all, it's the granddaddy of Mall, and how, why not have the dean of uh, college football, the granddaddy himself, Joe Paw, involved in that one? But if you were forced to push me in a corner, I would have to say it would be the Texas matchup in the Fiesta Bowl against OSU. Why? Because if, in fact, Texas go in there, goes in there like I think they will and manhandle and playing with a chip on their shoulders, then immediately you thrust the, yourself in a position to vie for that national title and have a split championship like we did a couple of years back with USC and of course LSU and if that happens again it's not going to be a chance it's going to be probable that you will have a split national champion of course the AP will grant theirs to Texas who beat Oklahoma yeah, and of course uh, Ohio State with two losses and lost to USC uh, but most people say that they have no chance to claim uh, anything there in terms of a national title real quickly Spence Utah uh, the non BCS conference school that's in the BCS they have won a BCS game before winning a Fiesta Bowl against Pittsburgh do you think they can knock off Alabama well, I don't know if they'll be able to repeat what Urban Meyer did uh, four years back at Utah. Of course, they, they had a tremendous win to put that program on the map in terms of the BCS family's uh, appearance in these major bowls. But I will say this. It's going to be competitive, and Nick Saban kind of put the little ingredients in place with his comments shortly after the loss to Florida when he said that we're the only undefeated team that earned it against a real BCS conference. And so we'll see if Mr. Whittingham and his bunch and his quarterback, Brad Johnson, will be able to do anything about that. All right, Spence, we'll see you and Stevie Wonder every single week as we uh, <laughs> Break down the VCS up into the national championship game. Nice touch there, buddy. That looks good. Thank you, Jace. <laughs> we'll see you soon, bud. All right, we'll see you. Bye-bye. All right, folks, that'll do it for the inaugural edition of the BCS Countdown Show presented by the new PSP 3000 system again each week leading up to the BCS National Championship game only here on CBSSports.com. For Spencer Tillman, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.